live in the city. We love being connected. And our meals at midnight. Our opportunities to celebrate together. Our comfort zones. Our encounters with the unexpected. Our business class and our social networks. We love the hipsters and the dropouts. But let's be honest, we don't love being stuck in the crowds. We don't love delays. We don't love traffic jams. What if your comfort zone, your network, your style were combined with smart, fast and secure public transportation? We have come up with an answer today. The Mercedes-Benz Future Bus. Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Daimler Buses at Sugar City. Sugar City is the perfect spot for our event today. It's an old sugar factory that has been turned into a modern city district. So it's a showcase for combining working and living in a smart, urban way. It's a perfect showcase also for urban transformation. And we're really excited to be in this part of Amsterdam. I think you will agree it's a very lov lovable and great city. And its nickname as the Venice of the North is well deserved. And some people say that the coffee shops here are even better than those in Italy. I have just a few housekeeping remarks before we get into the much more exciting bus business of today's event. First of all, please all keep your headsets with you throughout the entire day. Because we have so many international guests from 26 countries today, we'll do this opening session in English. But even if you do not need a translation right now, every one of you will need a headset later in our workshops. So again, please keep them with you for the entire day. Secondly, I'd like to make you aware that we have lots of press and multimedia materials available on d.ai slash futurebus. And finally, of course, there's a hashtag as well. It's hash MB futurebus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have many special guests with us today, including two I'd like to introduce to you as our first speakers of today. Please welcome Elisabeth Post, Vice Governor of the North Holland Province, and Marjolaine Sonema, Deputy Director General, Accessibility and Infrastructure Environment of the Netherlands. We are honored to have you here today, and we look forward to your remarks. Please welcome with me, Ms. Post. Well, thank you, Florian, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to you all. It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome you to the Netherlands and to the province of North Holland. Today is a special day. Not only is it a very sunny day, according to the Dutch standards, but it's also a unique day as far as smart mobility is concerned. Daimler have chosen our roads for trying out their bus of the future. The province of North Holland is working on smart solutions to enhance traffic, traffic efficiency and safety. In the future, traffic and infrastructure will become increasingly smarter. Our traffic management, management center in the province of North Holland and our traffic lights are already connected. They are smart, so to speak, and ready for the next step in smart mobility, consisting of automated vehicles. For that reason, we work together with private companies to learn about and improve the interaction between infrastructure and vehicles. By way of this collaboration of public and private parties, we've managed to accelerate new innovative concepts 
like those we will see and experience today. On the provincial roads around Schiphol Airport, we have created test a test environment in which practical trials can be performed. We wanted to create the possibility to not only test, but also innovate on our rapid transit bus route between Schiphol Airport and Haarlem. Together with the municipalities of Haarlem, Meer and Haarlem, and Viales, also here today as a supplier of traffic lights, we have adapted our traffic lights to the worldwide, stand worldwide standards on intelligent transport systems. In the coming years, we will invite and encourage private partners to test their smart mobility solutions on infrastructure that is ready for the future. Today, we will take an important step towards this future. Our goal is to learn from those innovations and, if necessary, adjust our infrastructure to make the traffic system in North Holland safer and more efficient. I wish each and every one of us a beautiful and exciting day with the bus of the future showcase. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, all other peoples of Daimler for organizing this event. I have to see whether my... Yeah, it works. So thank you very much for the opportunity uh, you've given us to tell you a bit about smart mobility in the, net in the Netherlands and our ambitions in the field of smart mobility and automated driving. Today it's the 18th of July, only 18 days after we finished the presidency of the EU. We look back at a successful informal meeting of the EU Ministers of Transport on connected and automated driving in Amsterdam. Mind you, this was the first time this subject, automated and connected driving, was discussed on a political level in the EU. The so-called Declaration of Amsterdam was adopted, in which not only European ministers and the European Commission, but also the automotive industry agreed on joint goals and a joint ambition, being the introduction of connected and automated vehicles on European roads by 2019. And also, we will have seamless borders by that time. A lot of questions can only be answered by testing in real life, in real traffic situations, like today. The learning by doing approach, or learning by experiencing, or even you could say the pragmatic Dutch approach, also called, um, is the backbone of the Declaration of Amsterdam. This has been brought into practice in the European Truck Platoon Challenge. The aim was to drive with platoons from several European cities to Rotterdam. Crossing multiple borders, the first event in its kind. And many partners joined us in this challenge, including six OEMs. Another example is the experience held during the informal meeting of the ministers. Owing to an impressive group of international car manufacturers, we were able to drive through some of the busiest parts of the city of Amsterdam and let all European ministers of transport experience the art of highly automated driving. What are the opportunities of these technological developments? I take it you know the three most mentioned ones. It makes our transport safer, it leads to less congestion, and thirdly, it gain, gains are to be made in terms of fuel efficiency and emission reductions. But there are also huge societal gains. Automated driving can also have a huge impact on us as drivers and employees. Imagine that all commuters from Madrid, Berlin, Amsterdam could spend their commute, commute time working and save maybe two hours a day by working in their car. What would you do with this extra time? This could have an enormous impact 
on productivity and also on comfort, as was shown in the film as well. And imagine there's no more empty buses driving through scarcely populated rural areas, but a completely new, innovative and flexible mobility service, mobility on demand. Not to speak of mobility which is brought to handicapped people and elderly people. So far for the societal goals. Back to the national level and back to learning by experience. In the Netherlands, our minister adjusted the law so that testing on any public road, any public road is possible. And there have been quite some tests in the Netherlands and we're happy to have them here. We work together with industry and public-private partnerships to create large-scale test bits. An example of this is found in the call for innovation partnership on talking traffic, in which our ministry's program, Beta Benutten, is working closely together with over 40 international companies on the deployment of cellular-based CITS nationwide. An open ecosystem is in the making in which the automotive industry, the telecom industry, and the internet parties are joining forces. To truly affirm our ambitions as a country in which large-scale testing is possible, we are currently working on the expansion of our facilities. In Brabant, another province, we expect a new and fully hybrid facility to be available in the first quarter of next year with a total area of about 70 kilometers open for testing, in regular traffic and in an urban and inter-urban environment. And crossover testing with automated driving could, possibly, could also be there. All parties are welcome to join in, like here in North Holland, of course. Finally, I would like to stress that we do not work as a country alone. Uh, we work together with other member states. For example, we have the Intercore, where we connect the different ITS corridors of Germany, France, UK, and the Netherlands. The world is definitely on the move. Initiatives are being launched, and we in the Netherlands are proud to have been able to give a big push to smart mobility in the EU. We are inviting anyone to test and work together on new opportunities. We, for one, are ready to facilitate a new era of mobility. In closing off, we are very happy to see you bring innovation to our country. Once again, like you did earlier this year in Amsterdam, in this beautiful province. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Post, Ms. Sonema. Thank you so much for these kind words. We truly appreciate the support and that we share the same approach towards urban mobility. For those of you who are interested in learning more on the future mobility in the Netherlands and in this region, there is a dedicated dialogue space in the workshop area right behind this black wall. There we have experts from the Netherlands who can talk in depth about this topic and answer your specific questions, including the colleagues from our Dutch technology partner company, Vialis. And as an added bonus, close to the dialogue space is also our coffee shop. But it's an Italian coffee shop. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to find out more about the future of the bus, the future of the bus in the city. And to let us know where we're heading, please welcome the CEO of Daimler Trucks and Buses. Please welcome Wolfgang Bernhardt. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks to all of you for joining us here in Amsterdam today. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Sonema and Mrs. Post, for being with us today, and thank you for your support. Only with your commitment, we could make today's event happen right here in Amsterdam. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you may ask yourself, why here? Why Amsterdam? You might know we, we prefer to have our world premiers on dams, just like last year when we presented our inspiration truck on the Hoover Dam. And it really was a great show. People were stunned. So this time we thought, how can we top this? How can we 
make this even better. And then we had uh, this really good idea, this damn good idea. Let's go to Amsterdam. And here we are, damn ready. Okay, there's one more reason, Ms. Sonoma and Ms. Post, you outlined already why your industry feels at home here. It's because of your pioneering spirit. It's because Amsterdam and the Netherlands are at the forefront when it comes to smart mobility concepts. Just three months ago, you hosted the Truck Platooning Challenge, a great initiative to show the power of autonomous and connected trucks. You also promoted the Declaration of Amsterdam, a declaration that Europe's transport ministers agreed on in April. It's a strong mission statement regarding autonomous driving. And it was signed right here in Amsterdam. So this is the perfect spot to announce the next breakthrough in smart transportation. This breakthrough innovation focuses on cities because, as we just saw in our intro video, we're living in an increasingly urban world. Cities are home to more than 50% of the global population, and the numbers keep increasing rapidly. On a global scale, every four days, another city the size of Amsterdam is being added. But if more people and more and more people eat, sleep, and work in cities, a number of big challenges emerge. One major challenge is to move all these people and to move them fast, safely, and comfortably. This means we need attractive public transportation, and that's why we are here today. Today, we present our vision of the smart public transport of tomorrow, the first autonomous city bus ever, the Mercedes-Benz Future Bus. This bus is all new in two regards, technology and design. My colleague, Hat Mochik, has all the details, the revolutionary design in a moment. So let's take a closer look at the revolutionary technology. To make this breakthrough innovation happen, we did not have to start from scratch. We made use of the synergies between our bus and our truck business. As you may know, Daimler is the pioneer in autonomous trucks. In 2014, we surprised everyone with our Mercedes-Benz Future Truck 2025, the first autonomous truck ever. In May 2015, we introduced the Freightliner Inspiration Truck in the United States, the world's first autonomous truck officially licensed for public roads. In October 2015, we equipped a Mercedes-Benz Actros with our intelligent system Highway Pilot and began testing it on German highways. And in March of this year, we put a platoon of autonomous trucks on the road using a new version of our Highway Pilot, the Highway Pilot Connect. In other words, when it comes to autonomous trucks, our technology and experience have no rival. In fact, our highway pilot for trucks has already logged roughly 100,000 kilometers of real-world driving since we started testing. So once we decided to develop an autonomous bus, we were able to build on this experience. But this was not just a copy-paste job, as the highway pilot name very clearly states, it was originally set up for highways, not for cities. How did we turn our highway pilot into a city pilot? First thing was to get back to work and develop additional functions. Our city pilot now incorporates all the know-how from the highway pilot, but it can also communicate with traffic lights, steer through tunnels, recognize pedestrians and, of course, bicycles, and it can navigate the bus into the bus stop with the highest precision. In fact, our city pilot narrows the gap between the bus and the curb to less than 10 centimeters to make it easy for passengers to get on and off, and it avoids damages to the tires. The second thing we did to get our city pilot on the road fast, we picked bus rapid transit as its first application. 
and we did so for good reason. In BRT systems, there are dedicated lanes for buses, so those routes are much easier to navigate than ordinary city street, as traffic is less complex. In this surrounding, our Mercedes-Benz Future Bus can make use and full use of all its intelligent functions. At the same time, the driver can, focusing, can focus on monitoring the system, because just like highway pilot, city pilot is a semi-autonomous driving system. That means the driver is still fully responsible and capable of overruling the assistance system at any time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now focus on why we developed our city pilot. In a nutshell, we did it to improve city life around the globe. Combining bus rapid transit with our city pilot technology offers valuable benefits for bus operators, for drivers, for passengers, and for everyone living in cities. First benefit. City Pilot offers more fuel efficiency and therefore fewer CO2 emissions. It's always braking, accelerating, and shifting gears in an optimum manner. Second benefit. City Pilot will provide more safety. It's very straightforward. This technology never gets tired. It's never distracted. Day or night, it's always 100% on. And as safety is more important to us than everything else, I want to stress two more things in particular. You can be sure that our city pilot will be well tested by trained professional drivers. And you can be sure that our city pilot will be monitored closely by its driver all the time. Now let's look at the third benefit of our city pilot. It offers more comfort for drivers by taking care of the steering and the braking. It takes a lot of pressure off of them. And the city pilot also offers more comfort for passengers. It allows for a smoother ride and a speedy, reliable service. Summing it all up, we're convinced that our city pilot will contribute to improving urban public transport. More people will be able to move faster, and more people will love to take a bus, our bus. Ladies and gentlemen, there's many good reasons to live in cities today, be it for your career, for your culture, for a broader social life, meeting people, and so on. We want public transport to add to that. Taking a bus should be as easy as pleasant as hanging out at a cafe, in a park, or on your sofa. With our Mercedes-Benz Future Bus, we make an important step in that direction. We'll be able to move many people in a smart way. We'll have less congestion and better traffic flow. That will improve the quality of life in the cities around the world. And we all should contribute to this goal. Politicians, as well as the transport industry and vehicle manufacturers. With that, I'll hand over to Hartmut Schick, the head of our bus division. Hartmut, the stage is yours. Thank you, Wolfgang. And a warm welcome to everyone in the audience. I'm glad you found the time to join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, as the previous speakers have already spelled out very clearly, today's megacities need a powerful transportation system, a system that is safe, sustainable, and intelligent. Everyone is invited to contribute. And Amsterdam is very creative in that regard offering sustainable and highly comfortable modes of transport. As you will see very soon, we took some inspiration from these examples when designing our city bus of the future. Seriously, city buses play an important role in public transport systems today, and they can play an even more important role tomorrow. To that end, they have to be attractive as possible. This is not an easy task, in fact, they face tough competition with other means of transport, among them new players such as car sharing services. And in this competition, city buses are not always seen as the most attractive choice. They get stuck in traffic, and if you have to wait for a bus that is delayed, 
you might think twice about taking it again. And recent study shows that public transport could be used for almost half of the routes traveled in the cities, but is used for only about 15%. So there's much room for improvement. And we will be the ones to make those improvements. We want to help our customers by making public transport more attractive to their customers. This is our aspiration as leader of the bus industry. Let's take a look at who typically takes the bus in a city. It's often people who are too young to drive themselves, that can't afford a car, or those who don't like the hassle in the city traffic. But what about all the others? If more people would take the bus, city traffic would get a lot more efficient. That's why we strive for nothing less than a new attitude. We don't want people to think, I have to take the bus. We like them to say, I want to take the bus. Um, I have to apologize, I just need a chair because I have some. Can I take it? Oh, shit. Well, I played soccer at the weekend, sorry for that. <laughs> I have to sit down. I shouldn't do it anymore in my age. That's why we are turning our buses into a comfort zone for all passengers. How do we do that? We basically reinvent two things. The design, especially the interior, and the ride experience. To come up with a great interior designed for a bus, we took inspiration from park big places that people really enjoy. Parks, for example. Next, we created a room with that same feeling, from the open sense of space to tree-like structures for the crab holes, to lights that look like leaves above your head. We also thought of different seating areas for different travel situations. One area for people who want to get on and off the bus quickly, another area for people who need information, for example, on the route, on possible interchanges, and a third comfortable area for those who stay on the bus a little longer. You can sum it up like this. We want people to really feel at home in our bus. We also wanted to create a great ride experience. And we did so by letting the bus operate semi-autonomously. It ensures the bus drivers in a very smooth way. Also, you can easily enter and leave the bus because of our city pilot navigates into bus stops with computer-like precision, very close to the curb. And when on the bus, our infotainment system and Wi-Fi access give you many possibilities to spend your time well, be it working, shopping, or relaxing. I'm convinced that this combination of new design and a great ride experience will make buses a lot more attractive. Passengers will love it. Long-distance coaches have undergone a positive change of image. We are determined to achieve the same for the city bus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have many ideas to suit the needs of our customers. We will keep offering the best buses. They are the basis of our business. But we will also develop ideas and systems to use these buses in an optimum way. In order to do so, we have established a new department, Daimler Buses Mobility Solutions. This team forms a creative core that will develop ideas around connectivity, autonomous driving, electric driving, and whatever other developments the future will bring. And we are not starting from zero. One great example is our bus depot management. The basic idea behind it, our service outlets perform services in the workshops of our customers. The operators profit from the high expertise of our technicians. And our service contracts help them to calculate the overall costs while keeping the transaction cost at a minimum. Another example for an initiative already existing in our portfolio are BRTs. Now have a look at this short video.
BRT in Amsterdam is about uh, speeding up bus lanes. That means we have fewer stops and that we can uh, transport uh, our customers faster and more efficient. Planning theories in the Netherlands in the 80s and 90s of the last century were about building uh, big suburban areas, but it also causes more traffic. And the municipality is trying to improve the bus network so that people can travel from and to their work and from and to school on a fast and efficient way. This BRT has uh, about 25 kilometers of separate uh, lanes, so the buses don't have any trouble uh, crossing other traffic. And it also drives in a high frequency, so that means that uh, customers don't have to check their, their watch or the timetable to see when they can go by bus, because every five minutes there is a bus. An extra advantage is that every customer that goes by bus doesn't go by car. That means there's less traffic jam, and less parking movements, so again, less pollution. This line we're driving on now has been a great success. It runs from Haarlem via the airport towards the southeast of Amsterdam. Uh, we now transport about 35,000 people every day on this line, which is about double than we expected it to be. And if we can convince people to get out of their car and into the bus to go to work or to school, then the BRT could be a role model for the future of public transportation. So, as you have seen, Bus Rapid Transit is another great example how we promote mobility solutions. We help cities to develop these systems. We support operators in finding the best routes, including ticketing infrastructure and stopping points. Daimler Buses has decades of experience in this field all over the world. The 2014 World Cup in Brazil is one example. We also help to implement BRT systems in cities with critical traffic densities like Istanbul, Mexico City and Bogota. And as you have heard from Mrs. Post, you can learn a lot from Amsterdam's great BRT system today. Ladies and gentlemen, today the industry leader is inventing the bus of the future. Even more, we are inventing the public transport of the future. It will be autonomous, connected, more efficient and safer than ever before. We see enormous potential ahead and we will seize it. Here comes our latest proof point. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our special guest for today, the Mercedes-Benz Future Bus. Here it is, our answer to the challenge 
of urban public transport, the Mercedes-Benz Future Bus. I can tell you I spent many years in the commercial vehicle development and this is one of the most exciting projects of my whole career. It revolutionized bus design and it's full packed with technology. And I want to tell you more details on both in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, let me begin with the design. As you can see, the look of our concept vehicle is already extraordinary. And this great design is not just nice to have. It will play a major role in convincing more people to use public transport. Let's have a closer look inside. The differences start with the doors. They are not at the ends of the bus, but in the middle. And this facilitates the entry and exit of its passengers. Now look at the interior. There's a lot of space. The right colors of the floor makes the interior look bigger. The same goes to the large windows. And here are the gray poles. They really look like trees, right? And the lights on the ceiling are like the leaves of a tree. As Helmut Schick mentioned, the whole interior resembles a park because we want that our passengers to feel relaxed, as, a, as relaxed as they would be in a park. Now, please check out the big displays. That's how we keep passengers informed on departures, delays, but also on news, like weather or the special offer at the mail the bus is heading for. What's also new? Well, we designed different travel areas for our passengers. Those who only stay on the bus for a short time remain standing right in the middle. That means the rest of the bus is quieter. In the back, you have got the launch area. It is for people who travel longer distances. As you can see, the seats are situated along the walls and they look like a little bit like park benches. Well, let's ask our camera woman to go to the front. There we have the service area of the bus near the driver. In case you need assistance, now here is a cockpit. As you can see, it is very different from today's buses. For one thing, it is not separated from the rest of the bus. That means the driver is more approachable for passengers. And here we are thinking really far into the future, when fully autonomous driving will, will be reality. Our bus driver could offer various services, making buses even more attractive. But for now, we are still in the stage of semi-autonomous driving. That means the driver is always in control and doesn't leave the driver's seat. Another thing that strikes the eyes. Most of the usual switches and buttons have been moved below the side window. They are still accessible for the driver, but make more room for this display. It's the focal point of the cockpit. The driver gets all the necessary information about the bus and its operation mode. And here are the monitors. That's shows the live images from the mirror cameras. Well, to sum it up, regarding the design, there's hardly a part we have not changed in our Mercedes-Benz future bus. And it was worth it. Well, I'm really proud of our designers and engineers. Now let's look at the technology that makes this bus even more special. It's our city pilot. Wolfgang Bernhardt already mentioned it. The system allows the bus to operate in autonomous mode. It is based on our proven highway pilot for trucks. However, we enhanced the technology for the use in cities and for public transport. Here you can see the many sensors of our future bus. There are 14 cameras, including stereo cameras for 3D vision, 
mirror cameras explains the external mirrors and cameras. We have cameras for lane recognition. There are radars along at the front corners of the vehicle. They cover ranges from 25 centimeters up to 10 meters. And we have an additional long range radar, which covers up to 200 meters. We use high precision GPS for localizing the vehicle. And via wireless connection, the bus can exchange information with the infrastructure, for example, with traffic lights. Just as important as the data we collect is what we do with it. Well, we fuse the data from the various sensors. That's how we create an exact image of the vehicle surrounding. So the bus knows exactly where it is at all times. It recognizes people and objects surrounding it, and it calculates exactly what will happen over the next few moments so it can react accordingly. Well, now you know the technological basics. Let's have a look at the test track of our future bus. The route from airport Schiphol to Harlem is Western Europe's longest BRT line. It spans almost 40 kilometers. And it really shows what BRT is capable of. On average, about 120,000 passengers travel on Line 300 every day. Today, we will cover about half of its distance, which quite a few challenges. There are 11 stops on the way, while 22 traffic lights, three tunnels, and some very tight turns. Plus, we will go as fast as 70 kilometers per hour. And most importantly, we do so in real traffic. The, bus, the buses of Line 300 are on regular duty. In other words, this is not a lab test. We are talking about real life conditions. Because seeing is believing, right? We have prepared some videos for you. Now let's get started. Let's go on tour with our city pilot. Our drivers push the city pilot button Feet off the pedals, hand off the steering wheel, off we go. The light in the front grill of the bus changed from white to blue. That indicates that the bus is now in autonomous mode. To be precise, we are in the stage of semi-autonomous driving. That means the driver can take the feet off the pedals, can let go, of the steering wheel, but the driver does not leave the driver's seat, and he's always monitoring the system. As soon as he actively interferes by steering or stepping on the pedals, the city pilot is immediately deactivated. That's how we ensure the driver always remains in control. As you can see, the bus drives exactly in the middle of its lane thanks to GPS and to camera-based positioning systems. Even at the top speed of 70 kilometers per hour, our bus will not depart more than 20 centimeters to the left or to the right. No human driver could, could do this, this over time. Our future bus is also capable of learning thanks to its cameras. They take in landmarks along the route, they take in the patterns of the road surface because they are like finger fingerprints. Then the vehicle compares it with its present location, and due to the data, it's memorized earlier and localized with a precision of just for eight centimeters. So our bus knows exactly where it is at all times. Now, what happens when the bus driver drives through a tunnel? Basically the same. GPS is not available in this case, but the camera-based positioning system are still in place and working perfectly. Now let's see what happens when the bus reached a traffic light. The bus informs the traffic lights, I am approaching. It does so by using Wi-Fi. The traffic light reacts it changed from red to white and lets the bus pass without stopping. 
What you can see in the film, it also works. What you cannot see in the film, it also works in the other way around. The traffic lights inform the bus of its status. Our city pilot calculates the speed to reach the next white light fast. This ensures an especially smooth and efficient ride, all in a hands-off mode. Well, let me, get, let me add one thing. In situations where there is no wireless signal, the bus still recognizes traffic signals by using a camera in its windshield. Ladies and gentlemen, here is our next scenario, approaching a bus stop. The driver can see a bus stop is coming up in about 40 meters. He sees that on his screen. The bus is slowing down all by itself. And when it stops, it does so with high precision. It's less than 10 centimeters away from the curb. That makes it very comfortable for all passengers to enter the bus. The doors open and close automatically. Light barriers ensure that the bus waits until everyone is inside. And a countdown on the display tells the driver we're ready to go. Sometimes pedestrians suddenly turn up at the bus stop. Our bus detects them immediately, thanks to radar sensors and to the stereo camera. The driver gets an alert on his display and the bus reacts accordingly. Is that not, is that, is does not leave the bus stop. Or if necessary, it will automatically break to a halt. Then the countdown before takeoff starts again. The bus leaves the stop. You can take a ride yourself in just a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope these videos have already made the point. Our Mercedes Future bus is the most advanced bus that has ever hit the road. And we are convinced that everyone will profit. Drivers will be a lot more relaxed. Bus operators benefit from better total cost of ownership. Passengers will love the beautiful design and the comfortable rides on our future bus. And they will also enjoy faster transit, thanks to improved traffic and passenger flow. And the quick e-ticketing process. What's more, they can spend their time on the bus using the infotainment system. Finally, everyone in the city benefits from a fast, clean, and extremely safe public transport system. To sum it up, at Daimler Buses, we do not just sell buses. We think in a holistic way, and we want to create a powerful public transportation system, a system that combines all of our know-how on buses and infrastructure. Today, with our Mercedes-Benz Future Bus, we are, we are taking an important step towards turning that vision into reality. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Gustav. And uh, congratulations to you and your team on this beautiful bus. Thank it's you really very much. It's really something else. It's really exciting to be here for the birth of the future bus. May I now ask uh, Wolfgang and Hartmut back on stage, please, for our Q&A. I'm sure there are lots of questions already. And please also Uli Bastard. He's the head of sales and marketing at uh, Daimler Buses. And Uli has to sell this baby in the future. So uh, sure. come on in the yeah. middle. We have more room here. And we get, uh, for about 10 minutes, we get to your first round of pressing questions. And then the rest of the day is uh, much more space for you to get going with us. But let's take the first round. It works as always. Please raise your hand and um, we'll bring you a microphone and off we go. Right here was the first gentleman. Microphone is coming. Well, good morning and thank you for the presentation. Um, of course, this is a prototype on a concept bus right now. Can you tell us a little bit about the roadmap of it? So when are we going to see it on the public roads? Well, um, you know that we as a bus division, we have a lot of support from our truck division. And um, they said that the beginning of next decade, they will start and we are fast follower. So beginning of the next decade, uh, you can see um, something in series. But what I could imagine, you have seen navigating into bus stops, I could imagine that 
these smaller things we could already do earlier because this is really supporting the driver and to the two eyes of the driver, we are adding 20 eyes of cameras and radars and everything. So this I could imagine even earlier. Thank you very much. I'm looking into the crowd for the next hand going up somewhere. So bright, it's hard to see. Oh, yes, thank you very much. The Mr. Bönke, please. Sascha Bönke, Omnibus Revue Deutschland. Viele Fahrer sehen dieses Fahrzeug skeptisch, einfach aus dem Grund, weil sie Angst um ihren Arbeitsplatz haben. Das habe ich gerade eben live auf Facebook bei uns gesehen. Was können Sie denen dazu sagen? Ja, vielleicht, äh, was zeigt da was dazu? Ich glaube, die teilautonome Fahren und die Funktion, die wir hier vorstellen, ist ein erster Schritt. Für den brauchen wir zunächst einmal schon mal ein paar Jahre, ich sage mal Ende der Dekade, bis das Realität wird und dann brauchen wir immer noch Fahrer. Und für diese Fahrer ist natürlich der Arbeitsplatz sehr viel attraktiver, sehr viel Stress im Fahrbetrieb wird von ihnen genommen, Speziell im Busfahrt ist es wichtig, Sicherheit, Komfort, Beschleunigen, Bremsen ist super wichtig. Und es geht nicht nur um die Passagiere im Fahrzeug, aber auch was außenrum passiert an den Haltestellen. Ich glaube, dass die Technologie da einen großen Beitrag leisten kann, um das Ganze komfortabel und sicher zu machen. Ob irgendwann einmal in der fernen Zukunft es möglich sein wird, vollautonom zu fahren unter Verzicht auf den Fahrer, das steht in den Sternen. Das steht auch nicht, im Moment nicht zur Debatte. Das können wir im Moment nicht absehen, ob das möglich sein wird. Wir präsentieren heute eine Funktion, die wir glauben, wie wir glauben, das Busfahren sicherer und komfortabler und effizienter macht. Vielen Dank. Let's go to the next round. Hands up, please. No more questions. Everything explained. Already. Everything is explained. <laughs> Everybody is interested <laughs> in going on the bus. Oh, yeah, ah, yeah. one more. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Vincent Weaver, OV Magazine in the Netherlands. I was wondering why isn't this zero emission? Okay. Well, you, you know that we announced that we will have, have our series production of Lecky Bus in 2018. Um, and obviously, the, the drivetrain can in the future be a diesel, it can be a gas bus, it can be electric drive, but um, we want to have economically feasible and technically feasible product ready in 2018. So wait another two years and you will see this product. Yeah. Me, in addition to that, I mean, we understand the background behind your question. When it comes to smart cities, for sure, there is something like a perfect fit having a CO2, less CO2 uh, powertrain and this very, very modern technology. But as Hasman Schick said, I mean, we want to concentrate today on this autonomous driving thing. Um, and we want to have this kind of technology later also in combination with all powertrains we have, from battery to immobility in total, CNG, but also our very modern and sophisticated diesel engines as well. And we want to do a second event when you have the electric bus yes. ready. So Absolutely. that's actually the main reason. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gustav. Yeah, Mr. Wagner. Thank you. Good morning, Thorsten Wagner, Last Auto Omnibus. A short question. With your trucks, you showed the platooning topic. Would that be also applicable to the bus? Could you platoon several buses to replace uh, articulated, for example? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Well, definitely yes. Um, and you can imagine we were already asked by some important customers in Germany that do this intercity uh, transport systems. They would be highly interested in doing that. Yeah. So, ex for example, when it comes to Fernbus business, why not? Why not? Thank you very much. We have time for one last question before I tell you more about the rest of the day. It's right back here. Thank you. Hello, Tobus Seal from the TED, Belgium. Um, I was wondering how expensive it would be, the bus, because you said like total cost of ownership will be uh, lower, but how does it come? 
Um, first of all, we think um, we will see a positive impact in terms of reduced fuel, fuel consumption. This will be, will be the fact. And certainly, it comes also to the point um, all our parts will be, um, I mean, the lifetime of the bus will be longer in the end of the day. And this pays in in total cost of ownership. Maybe I say one more thing. Uh, since we are uh, together at Daimler, we are having the opportunity to combine componentry from the passenger car and putting those cameras, sensors, uh, activators uh, into the vehicle. A and that brings down the cost of the whole system quite a bit. So we believe that in the future, this, C this feature will be affordable. How much? Uh, it's not the time at this point of time uh, to put a price tag on it. But I think uh, we can say that it would be affordable because we are able to reach into the parts bin of the passenger car, guys. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. May I ask you to please take a quick seat while I go through the housekeeping remarks. Thank you very much. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to explain to you how we move on. After a short break, we will get into the second part of today's program, namely our five workshops. You hopefully have noticed by now that we gave you wristbands that uh, have started to glow. This is because your wristbands will be your personal guides for your workshops today. So it's your uh, smart uh, bus assistance system today. Um, if your wristband glows white, please head to our technology workshop called Be Independent. If it glows blue, please join our design for Inspired. If you see a green light, you're clear to go into the efficiency workshop, focusing on bus rapid transit. If it turns yellow, you are not asked to be cautious. Instead, you're invited to our IAA preview and fleetboard workshop. And for everyone who is seeing red right now, well, you're the lucky ones. You will begin the workshop, be on the road. You're going to enter our hero of our event today. You will go on a very special ride on our very special future bus. Your wristbands will start blinking when your workshop is about to start. And when it's time to go to the next workshop, they will blink again in your next workshop color. And my colleagues will help you find your next session. By the way, the closer the start time gets, the faster this wristband will start to blink. So that's our not so subtle way of saying, get ready, please. <laughs> The workshop sessions will begin 20 minutes from now. And when your wristbands show the color purple, the final color, you're free to enjoy a break for coffee or to talk to the colleagues. After the workshop, we will leave this to location for our dinner with the executives from Daimler Buses. The shuttles will leave directly from here at the drop-off point at the entrance. And now I ask everybody from our speakers and the officials from the Netherlands back on stage for a photo, please. Hey there, here we are live again and now we are on the bus and actually riding with the bus and we are tunnels missing riding so it's fascinating to see that and um, as I mentioned earlier the spectacular thing about this is that it's actually not so spectacular because um, it's just driving like a normal bus but as you can see when you're looking at the driver the driver is not touching the steering wheel and the driver is not touching the pedals with its feet and the bus itself if you look at the traffic lights now I don't have any idea about Dutch traffic lights and when it's turning to white I guess it's driving on again but all on its own so we are actually riding autonomously and 
Daimler Bus is actually the first manufacturer to put this city bus into automated operation. So it recognizes traffic lights, it's got a Wi-Fi connection, and um, by recognizing the traffic lights, you can actually take advantage of the green wave, which means it can ride smoothly and comfortably all the time. And uh, the bus driver is actually passive. Of course, he's controlling the system. He's always in charge. He can always override the system, so we're completely safe. But it's a completely good feeling, safe feeling, by riding this bus. Next beside me is a journalist from Japan, and I'm um, going to ask him a few questions. Hi, how do you enjoy it? <laughs> how do you enjoy the ride? Yeah, it's, it's good. How does it feel for you? Yeah, it's very smooth and yeah. very comfortable <laughs> okay. compared to the normal bus, <laughs> I okay. would say. So, um, are you often riding a bus in Japan? Uh, not really. We usually take the metro okay. because there is a good network of the metro. So, yeah. And the, on the road, it's, it's uh, crowded with the traffic jam. So. <laughs> okay. would, this be, would this be also interesting, having this in Japan too? Uh, maybe, but the, the problem is that the King Amsterdam, mm -hmm. they have, their, they have a uh, designated terrain for the bus, yeah. so it will, it will make easier to operate the buses, but in Tokyo, for example, there's not so much yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, rain, bus rain, so that would be a problem. For. Thank you very much. Um, as you can actually see, the bus is crowded, just like a normal bus going on the way to work, but it's stuffed full with journalists and technical experts, and they all have on the first right. And you can see they are actually, actually having a workshop there and getting technical information by my colleague Dr. Pullager and um, they're really enjoying it. So waiting now for the doors to close, so it's a normal stop and the bus will go on again. See, we're now passing crossroads, and the camera system and the sys system, they recognize there's a white light, we can go on, and it's all being driven automatically. It's a complete autonomous drive. and it's going around corners, no problem, you can see steering wheels turning in, braking by itself, just like a normal drive. By the way, this is a BRT line, so we are actually in Amsterdam, but moving from Haarlem to Amsterdam. This is one of the longest BRT lanes there are, it's about 20 kilometers, we are uh, about to pass now. and. You see again, we are passing the next traffic situation, no problem. And we see the next bus stop. We're going to stop. So, and about a short time, we are approaching a very interesting situation, which will prove the safety of the systems which are working together here, the camera systems and the navigation systems. And we are approaching a bus station. coming to a stop and you see drivers just controlling is doing nothing bus rides on its own Let me, let me introduce you, Uwe Grimm to you. He's one of the technical experts actually setting up the whole thing. He's been testing for weeks. Now, Uwe, are you proud today? 
Yes, sure, so sure, I'm proud. We haven't, we haven't the first drive, everything is complete in comfort and safety. No problems at all, yes. And you've been testing and developing for weeks, and um, now is the day, and everything's working perfectly. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm really proud. About the whole team, everything working a lot, everyone is, was working a lot, and but we've finished with, I think, a perfect result. Mm -hmm. What was your job while setting up this whole thing? So I'm uh, from the testing department of uh, EvoBus, and in this project I was the, uh, I was leading the technical part. Yeah, so I'm responsible that it works like it works. Cool, and we definitely can see that it works like it should be. And um, we're now approaching um, an interesting situation. So the next bus stop is about to approach. just passing this van here and maybe you can explain this situation now to us um, there's a guy standing at the bus stop yeah, but yeah. it's no coincidence because we want to show something yeah he's an actor yeah and we just we first stop on this uh, stop station and after the bus wants to start he will move in yeah okay. and we will see what happens okay yeah so I hope nothing's gonna happen, but I'm quite yeah, sure. <laughs> at this moment, we open the door. Yep. Yeah. Taking the normal stop. Our passengers going out and in. And let's watch the situation now. So it's a typical traffic situation when somebody steps into traffic. Bus rides on, and there's the guys just stepping on the road, and the bus stops. it stops. Yeah. yeah perfect. So the camera system, the radar system realized that there's something on the road yeah. and stopped the bus. And stopped the bus, yeah. And for safety, it stopped really in front of the passenger, yes. Yeah. Just a word about the technical systems. Um, it's a combination of radar and Wi-Fi and yeah. different assist systems. Can you explain that to the viewer? Yeah, we have for, every, for each situation we have more than one system because for sure, if there's only one system, one system can fail. So for safety, we have a lot of systems. Mm -hmm. uh, for passengers, we have a stereo camera, mm -hmm. yeah, and we also have a radar system to detect mm -hmm. passengers. Yeah. You can see here from the backside there are lots of cameras installed yeah. into the windscreen. Yeah. And how many cameras are there on board? I'm not really sure, but I think more than 15 cameras wow. are on okay. board here. So to do all uh, the things, yeah. So the bus has a 360 degree view all around itself, and so it's completely safe um, for passengers and the traffic in itself. Yes. Cool. Approaching normal bus. I like I like the people's reactions on this bus because I never seen such a thing before. Yeah. And so it's your it's your experience too. People start waving, and when you when you did test the bus, uh, people always try to get in. And because we are normal, we're normally stopping at the traffic light, and uh, people were so interested at the bus stops, uh, they wanted to join the ride. But of course, you weren't allowed because you were, of yeah. course, testing the whole thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think Do you think um, how many time How much time will it take to actually see? Um, this bus as a zero production car on the road. You will be testing on the whole system and maybe later on you take the first steps to put it into production. Yes, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we will go on with testing of all the systems, yes, and bring them to the Siri, yes. And I think it will take a couple of time uh, till all the systems like now we have in this car will be in a serial uh, produced car, but um, I think uh, some of the systems, I think we don't have to wait too okay. long until uh, they be in the Siri car, yes. Let's hope so, because the benefits you can clearly see. So we're now approaching the next bus stop and um, we are right at the end of our live stream now, so I'm getting off the bus. I hope you enjoyed the ride and see you next time. My name is Dan, live from Amsterdam and that's all for now, bye.